Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. And we have an episode that's a little bit outside of business today, but it's also important. That's one of the things I love about this show. I sound so arrogant already because it's my own show, but we don't just talk about business here. We talk about business, mindset, body, health, spirit, all of it. You can't be a successful business owner if you don't have the rest of your life intact. So we're going to dive in today. We're going to talk about self-love, self-care, all of these things, debunk some myths. And I have a guest here to do it all with me, Sam Morrison Wilson. Sam, before we go any further, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited for this conversation because it's one of those hot topics. It's a buzzword, right? Self-care, self-love. And I, I don't think it gets enough coverage. And I think people have a lot of made up stories in their head about yeah, it. For so sure. let's define it first. What, yeah. do, what do you say well, self-love is? I say that self-love takes six different types of self to tie together. So a lot of times people will say self-love and self-care and use them interchangeably. Look at me. I'm already making mistakes here. It, right. It, hap <laughs> it happens all the time. And so I believe that self-care is part of self-love. But if all you do is self-care, you're not going to have a life of self-love. There's also self-growth, self-respect, self-esteem, self-worth, and self-awareness. And so there's six of them that all come together. I have what I call my love wheel. And whenever you can do a little bit in all those areas, you'll create a life of self-love. The biggest myth that I think that I'm working on kind of countering in the world is that so many women think that self-love is selfish. And so that's why I title most of my talk, self-love is not selfish. And I'm on a mission to work with women to help them learn how to love themselves more fully, to be able to give in some really pretty cool ways that they want to do, but it doesn't deplete from them at all to where they still get to take care of themselves. And so self-love is not selfish. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I've also noticed, you know, whether it's leadership and business or as a parent with your family, you know, you can't give fully if you're not if you're not whole and full yourself, too. So you need to you need to fill that bucket. And I, I definitely don't believe that it's yeah. selfish. There yeah. can be selfish ways of going about it. Yes. So I want to kind of pick this apart a little bit because right. we don't want to be a narcissist. Right. But we want to <laughs> we want to have yes. self love and take care of ourselves. Yeah. So. Can we start to unpack these, these yeah. six goals, if you will? Where do you so, want to start? Well, with I have a, a good example of what it means. So I, I had two church services. One a friend of mine went to and one my mom's pastor was talking about self-love the same weekend. Mm -hmm. And I was able to experience both services, listen to one online. I went in person. And I'm like, after listening to those two sermons, no wonder the world's confused because the people don't, nobody says the same thing, right? <laughs> and whether you're a Christian or not, because, and I am, but whether you're, even if you're not a Christian, you understand that self-love can be toxic, right? It can. And people say, oh, self-love means you're a narcissist or you just put yourself above everybody else or that you're more important than anybody else. But that's called love of self, of right love of self but when you have love for self that's when you can actually put yourself in a place of priority so that you take care of yourself so that when you do give it doesn't take away from you like i said earlier and so the idea of if you're doing it properly love for self is the goal love of self is not the goal and yeah. it, de it definitely you said that, you know, we're this isn't really tied to business, but this is tied to everything. Mm -hmm. If you don't love yourself properly, you show up in wildly different ways. Before I started my self-love journey nine years ago, 
if I had, I actually went through a training and they asked me to use one word to describe myself in that moment. And the word I used, this still is hard to say, but it was true. I, I said I was worthless. Hmm. How do you think you show up in the world? How am I going to give and to contribute to my family or to a company if you feel like you're worthless? And so it's tied to everything. So if you can do one thing different to build on creating this life of self-love, it'll impact everything and have a ripple effect, not just for you, but everybody in the world. Yeah, the language you use for yourself is incredibly powerful. And to, to say you're worthless or really any negative word, I mean, yeah. interchange it for however you feel at, at any particular moment, that's how you're going to show up. And that's yeah. how other people will perceive you, whether they can pursue it or not. They're going to say, oh, that person is a worthless, yeah. useless individual. So, yeah, that's that's a yeah. good message. So I'm curious when you're when you're working uh, through this process with you work predominantly with women, but uh, this applies men too. We got a lot 100%. of hundred percent. It applies. Um, where do you, where do you tend to start? I, I mean, I, if I were to take a stab at it, I would say we would probably want to start with awareness. Am I right? You have to start with awareness. Yes. Well, yes, awareness is important, but believing you have the worth self-worth is usually where I start because unless you believe you're worth it, you're not going to do anything. You may know it, but you're not going to do anything with it. And one step further back from that, whenever I actually encourage somebody if i meet somebody and i'm just talking to them and they're like where do i even begin i have one thing that i suggest just and it's so easy it's free anybody can do it start a gratitude list i believe that gratitude is the powerhouse of creating a life of self-love because when you focus on the good and the things you have to be grateful for you're naturally going to see more of that and then you're going to be able to start it, it just is a magical thing. I don't know how it happens or why it happens, but if you start with gratitude and you build from that, then you can actually start to create the life of self-love. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the oldest cheat code in the book, and it's not it's not magic. It's not a cheat code. It's in the good book multiple <laughs> times. It says prayer and thanksgiving. Give thanks yeah, in everything you do all over that book. Uh, all, the Bible is obviously what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and I think that's people, the, the gurus on the internet want to say, oh, gratitude, gratitude. Where'd you get that from? Yeah, give, me, no. give me your original, the original source. source. The original yeah. source, please. <laughs> source. Give, give credit to the to the original source. Um, but yeah, because it's, it's, I mean, psychologically, from a science perspective, it is impossible to feel any negative emotion and gratitude at the same, at time. The same time. So if you are in gratitude, truly, you can't, you can't feel worthless. You can't feel yeah. uh, like... It's it's the easiest thing to do. So just start writing them down. Keep a, well, you know, I personally am a big believer in writing. There's something tactical that happens in your, and it, it just solidifies it. My mom has told me for years, write it down, make it real. Right. And so writing is the first choice, but if you don't have the ability or you're, you think I'm going to forget, then do your, use your phone or on your computer but keep that gratitude list because when you're having a bad day, because we'll, we'll have bad days, then what do you go back to? You go back to that list and you read it. Um, I have just last week, you know, I've been doing this for nine years. And last week I had a situation come up where um, I've been dealing with some dental issues and I wasn't feeling well. And I went to order groceries online, which is what I usually do. And in an effort to save some money, Instead of having them delivered, we were, I was going to go pick them up. And so I told my husband, this is the time that we're going to go pick them up. And he's like, cool, we'll go. And then I go check on the order and I forgot to hit submit. Mm. And in that moment, the negative self-talk started. And I had to say, Oop, that's not true. Oop. And then we get there to pick it up and there was a storm and their systems were down. So we didn't get the groceries and all this stuff right and so even though i'm aware of it it's something you have to do continually um but being able to catch those negative thoughts to where you say oh well, that's not true you know the truth is it was an accident it's not a big deal we're not going to starve right and so being able to grab those thoughts and replace them with the truth that would be the second step I would do gratitude and then being able to recognize your thoughts, which is the self-aware part. Yeah. And the tough thing too, is obviously you said you've, you've practiced the negative words with yourself for a long time. So 
that will come up and it's it's about practicing now the new positive beliefs and the new positive self-love so i'm curious if we if we take a step back because those are two fantastic places to start but these two sermons that you heard what was the can you give me the summary of each of them and, and kind of what they said about self-love and we can yeah so my we don't mom have to name the church though let's not throw anybody i won't, under the I won't. <laughs> my mom just started going to this little church we're in, we live in texas and she's in a small town well mid, middle-sized town i won't even say where and she just started going to this church and it's a small church there's probably only 40 or 50 people there and she wanted me to go i was visiting her so i went and they were talking he was talking about um love of self so he was definitely mm -hmm. talking about it from the negative point of view he never mentioned that it could be positive he talked about how it can cause narcissism and being egocentric and how you're putting yourself even before god and he was focused on all the negative which is true it can happen and at the very end he was praying and he actually out loud said you need to stop loving yourself and it took everything i had to not say no <laughs> <laughs> but like i was sitting behind his wife and their kids and my mom who she would have been mortified but no wonder the world is confused and so because what do you believe and when you have to have the basis of understanding of what it is to begin, which is why when somebody joins my community, I want them to go through that self love mini series because it gives the bait. And if you, if you go through it and you don't agree with my base of understanding, that's okay. It's okay. But you probably won't be a good fit in the community because everything we do ties to that. The second sermon though, which I listened to on the way home, while I was driving home from my mom's, he was talking about the good kind of love, um, love for self and how taking care of yourself was really important to be able to give. Cause if you can't, if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to give to anybody else. He's the one that used the words love of self and love for self and put that in my brain to help me understand the way to make that make sense. And so I, it actually gave me wording around being able to communicate the difference. Yeah, I like that. And I mean, the the first guy's right. Let's not let's not right. discount that. Like the, the, word, the word pride is love of self and it's it's idolatry. So it is, it is completely anti-biblical in, in the whole sense. But what you're talking about here is the love for self and taking care, yes. taking care of yourself so that you can give to others, which I think yeah. is a very noble thing to do. Yeah. And I, I, I see a lot of people too. I think women are more guilty of it and you can speak to that as well, but it's almost like this, uh, like a martyr syndrome. Like, it's just like, I give so much to other people and I take nothing in return. Yeah. It's like, cool. Then you're exhausted in like three weeks. Yeah. Where does that get cool. you and other people? Yeah, one hundred percent. And it comes like Jesus, like he gave. I mean, he yeah. is our example, right? I get it. So I see why it happens, and I know that we're not Jesus, <laughs> right? And we that can't do this with things. And so what I what I like to teach my the way I teach the women in my community is, and I don't have one here with me, but I I use the symbol of a cup. Everybody knows the phrase, you can't pour from an empty cup. Mm. But what I do is I imagine that cup on a saucer. It's sitting on a saucer and you keep your cup full by doing all the things, love for self, not love of self. And then all the excess flows to the saucer and you pour out of the saucer to give in very generous, kind, loving ways without depleting yourself. And when you do that, you've created a life of self-love and everybody wins. I love that analogy. That's that's so beautiful. Um, so we don't have enough time to d dive into and unpack everything. I did put your website. You have a community. Uh, I put that on the screen. It'll be in the show notes down below, whether you're watching or listening to school.com slash safe heart connections. If you haven't heard of school, go check it out. School, oh school is cool. 
Um, it yeah, it's so cool that you have a, a community over there and you have your mini series that you mentioned. Yes. You'll get free access to that as well, right? 100%. Yep. They just log in. They'll get a message from me saying, here's where you start. And there's um, a few videos just to get them, show them around the community, how to maximize it, learn a little bit more about me and what we're trying to do. Then they go through the self-love mini series and um, we just have a great time. The, the, the connections that are being made in the community and the dialogues back and forth with the women um, have just been magical. Um, it just brings tears to my eyes. One woman, there was a devotion, not a devotion, an affirmation thing that we had. She read it and part of it said was to say out loud to yourself that you love yourself. And she typed her name, comma, I love you in the in the chat. And I just was like, I mean, the fact that I get to be part of this is really pretty amazing. That's so cool. Um, actually, let me run this by you because I think it might it might apply. Maybe someone in your community has, has done this. Have you heard of the exercise with the, the first Corinthians verse? Love is patient. Love is kind where you, you switch your name for love. Oh, yes, I have. Yes. Oh, man, yes. such a cool exercise. And then it really makes you think about yourself, too. It's like, oh, I don't know that I, I am patient or am kind. I do? <laughs> am I, though? <laughs> Is that yeah. before or after coffee? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's let's wait till after. <laughs> well, yeah, um, thank you for having me today. This has been wonderful. And um, I appreciate you helping me kind of get the word out. And, and just remember, self-love is not selfish. I love it. I, I absolutely love the the topic and really what you're going after here because it's so important. Like I said, we need to nourish ourselves in order to give back to others. You can't just deplete your own and empty your own cup. The analogy that Sam used before. So Sam, I have one last question before I let you go. It's All the right. most important question. It's a question for a question. You see okay. the question mark behind me? I love questions. Yes. I'm a yes. big fan. We believe powerful questions get powerful answers. So around the topic of self-love, what do you want someone, the listener, to walk away from this episode with? Give them the question that they're going to ponder over for the next day, week, month, whatever it is, that's going to impact them and get them on this journey for love for self. What would your life look like if you loved yourself? Oh, that's a doozy of a question. I love that one. That was awesome. Very, very cool. Well, wherever you're watching or listening, think about that for a few minutes before you go on and do whatever you're going to do, whether it's working out, driving to work, wherever you are. Think about that question and see what the answer that comes up is. And then if you need a little help, school.com slash safe heart connection, Sam will walk you through how to love yourself the right way in order to give back to others. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe. We want to see you on Harmonious at Lunch tomorrow. We'll see you on the next episode.